So in this example, if you haven't noticed from the class names, we're going to make two columns. So everything within this first div will be the first column, and this will be the second column. So what I want to do first is I want to change the size of these elements, the width of them. Because right now, if we look at our page, they're spanning across the whole page. So we can't really set them next to each other without changing the size. Now, if I want to change the size of both of them equally, we can go ahead and write that property here in the div rule. So let's go ahead and we'll just make these 400 pixels. So both of these divs are now going to be 400 pixels wide. So we'll go ahead and save that and take a look. There you go. Now we have two divs. They're still stacked on top of each other, giving more of a, a row look and feel. So now let's make these look like columns. To do so, I'm going to introduce the float property. So in column one, we'll go ahead and hit enter after font size. And we're going to add float, colon. And we want column one to float to the left. And for column two, we want that to float to the right. So the terminology could be a little confusing or deceiving. And it often causes beginners and, and even experienced developers to be a little frustrated when messing with floats. But at this point in time, just know that what it's going to do is it's going to set one item to the left and one to the right. Go ahead and save. Refresh. And there you go. And congratulations. We've just used floats to create columns. Now you might have expected that right column to actually rest next to the left column. And that's probably what you'd be going for. So let's talk about how we can pull that off. Now here's where the terminology of container or wrapping uh, really comes into play here. 